Welcome back to Innovation RC, guys. Today we're gonna be installing Spartan's new motor. And it's even bigger than what was in it previously. So it's certainly been a while since I've actually done anything like this. Now, I have two big whopping motors from TP Power right here. And I'm actually just gonna show you guys how to properly install it. Additionally, we are also going to solder bullets on it. And you guys are gonna watch me struggle. So if this seems interesting, be sure to subscribe for more. We're gonna have a lot more videos just like this that will help you guys out. Be sure to do that. Now, obviously, our eyes go right to these big whopping motors. This motor over here was the previous motor ran in Spartan at over 150 miles an hour. And to tell you the truth, this motor definitely has a lot more in it. But I wanted to actually try a larger motor and see how it performs, how it feels, and all that. Now, regarding when I said previously that I'm going to struggle soldering the bullets on, we could see how big this motor is and the whopping 8 gauge wire coming out of this. Well, this 22 horsepower motor is actually going to have even larger wire. We could see this 6 gauge wire on here. It's about a quarter inch thick. It is really, really impressive. Now, obviously when you get it out of the box, you're not gonna see the bullets on it. So I already soldered these earlier. So I'm gonna show you guys how to solder it, obviously the correct way, even though that I did say that yes, it was a struggle because you're gonna need a lot of heat and it's gonna have to be quick. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And if you guys haven't done so, be sure to follow Innovation RC on Instagram. We'll have more pictures, videos, and other cool stuff on there prior of it being released on YouTube definitely do that now real quick one thing that i will say regarding big motors you do not need these motors to be fast but the real reason why you would really want a larger motor regardless of kv is just to torque out whatever you're doing the more torque you have the more efficient everything will run which means less heat after i do a run at over 150 miles an hour this motor is really like at 120 degrees at most, 130, and that's not bad. That just means this motor is going to last a hell of a lot longer rather than a simple 40 series or 47, which would be like a 1717. Those motors could still do 140, 150, but it's going to take a lot more effort for them to do so, unlike these guys. Now, without any further ado, let's solder this monstrosity. All right, so I'm gonna try this iron out. It's got a digital display, 100 watts of power, and that's really, really good. Uh, we're gonna see how well it's gonna hold up to the six gauge wire, and if you guys want this iron, it is going to be in the link in the description below. All righty, so this is gonna be a little unboxing as if I were to never solder bullets on it, and if I were to just get it in the mail and take it out of the box. Look how big it is. This is the definition of gigantic. <laughs> Now I like to use 6040 rosin core solder. It is also lead free, so it's gonna have an even higher melting point than your standard solder, but it's gonna hold up a lot better. Now this is really gonna be where I struggle because yes, we have 100 watts of power, but even then so, even with this nice iron, it still struggles to get the solder flowing inside of the wire here, uh, but we still managed to do it. And I'm actually surprised that the shrink wrap isn't tearing down the middle. Now I do like to tin my wires, even though that they come pretend, I still like to tin my wires uh, just so that when it goes into the bullet and when you heat everything back up, eventually you'll see all the solder is going to flow and it's going to attach itself to the bullet in a much stronger way from the inside out. And that's why I still like to tin over the tin just to be sure everything is uh, flowing throughout the wire. Now we have our genuine Castle 8mm bullet and I really like to use these bullets. They're really, really high quality. And we're also gonna be using a micro torch. It's really from Harbor Freight, very, very cheap. It's like 12 bucks. Uh, so you wanna heat the bullet up, but you really need to be careful when you start heating up the bullet. You don't wanna keep the heat on a certain place for too long, which is why you'll see me shake it back and forth. And you'll also see the wire actually start to melt the solder or the tin that's on it and it's going to connect itself to the wire properly. 
Now this one shows it even better to exactly what I'm talking about. So you know it's a guaranteed proper connection all throughout where it beads right up at the top. Now I like to clean the bullets and we are definitely going to have to move the micro torch because yes it is extremely flammable um, and you don't want to have the torch lit or active at all during this. So I just want to spray the rag and it is actually after the bullets are done cooling off naturally so I don't cool them off with anything else. And you just want to get like all the extra flux that'll spit or splatter around and it's just going to clean the tips and it's what I like to do just to make sure that everything is proper and clean. Beautiful. Up next we're going to have to shrink our little shrinkaroo wraps and as you guys can see that's just insulating the end and it's going to look pretty professional once it's all done. Awesome, everything looks very professional, clean, and the motor is ready to go and be installed into Spartan. Alrighty, so now with Spartan's hood popped, we can see what the motor is actually going to have to go into. We can see that beautiful PPS motor mount. That antenna is really, really annoying, but I'm going to let that slide for now. As we can see, the motor mount of choice that we are going to be installing this motor into is the PPS motor mount. It is an awesome mount and you could really just screw it. You guys can see on the side over here with that little screw pin. You can screw it to adjust the gear mesh. So we're going to be doing all of that. All the tools you're going to need are going to be right here to install that motor into this car. Now we're going to be going over everything. This is a 2.5 millimeter. This is also a two millimeter. And this is really all that you need. You can use like a six and a half millimeter uh, uh, nut driver to actually screw that in but I recommend you do it by hand which is whatever it just takes longer and of course we have our blue Loctite or thread lock whatever you want to call it I would definitely recommend blue Loctite over red all day every day you don't want it to be in there permanently but you just don't want it to move all right so we're gonna start by putting the motor slide onto the motor obviously you have your two countersunk uh, screws inside of here now what you want to do you actually want to put them inside the slide First, you don't want to like thread lock them and then uh, put them in because you're going to get thread lock all over the slide and you don't really want that. I generally just like to put like a little dot, like not that much. It's not all the way around, but as long as there's some on there, in which there was already some on there prior, so you really don't need that much. I'm going to want the motor going in like this over here and the wires are actually going to bend up. So now that we know this is up and down, we just want to keep it like that and we know that this is going to be up and down just like this. Now you just want to basically just put the slide on, kind of balance it. Now when it's on, we're going to take our 2.5 and just start the thread on one bolt and we're going to start the thread on the other. You don't want to go all the way down on one because it could be an uneven uh, press down with the slide onto the motor end cap and you don't want to do that. When you get to the end, I just like to barely snug it on until I get the other one all the way snug on as well. You also have to remember you don't need to do it crazy, crazy hulkingly tight because you also have Loctite. Uh, now what I normally like to do regarding Loctite's dry time, you really want to give it like overnight. Alrighty, tidy lefty loosey. Now that we have our motor slide installed on the motor, what you need to do regarding these big whopping motors, they're heavy. Honestly, they really are for what they are. Uh, you need to support the rear end just so it could slide in without making any burrs or scrapes into the slide. So notice my hand is still supporting it and I like to support both ends. And I, you just really have to wiggle it in. Uh, there's no set way to do it. Now that we started the threads, you can see when I screw in, the motor is actually going in some. Now that's good. Now we have our pinion gear. This is a 45 tooth Sack Customs gear. These are the absolute best gears to get. Period. Now notice that there are actually uh, two grub screws in here. What I'm going to do, if I can find the hole, <laughs> is remove both the grub screws because we need to Loctite these as well. All right, so we're not installing the gear yet. You guys can see the little grub screw. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the threads and a little bit on the actual tip of the screw because that's actually going to dry onto the motor shaft. It's just going to give it a little bit better of a hold. Now when I screw it in, I don't just screw it in all the way. I like to go back some and in some just to make sure that the Loctite gets all over the threads on the actual gear. Now we're going to do the exact same to this one. Just a little bit. Now you guys can see we're going in. What you want to do, you want to actually make sure that the teeth, 
well, it's hard to see, not the backlash, but if you're looking at it this way, you wanna be sure that the teeth aren't like a little bit to the left or to the right. You wanna be sure that they're like smack in the middle, just so that the width of the tooth is hitting the maximum width of the spur gear. And you're not really like, you know, using half the gear to put all the power to the ground. You gotta be sure that you put it on uh, basically even. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope you guys are understanding. Screw on. Not hulkingly tight because remember we have two grub screws and there's Loctite. Up next we have our slide holder. So now you don't want to use too much Loctite. You don't need to overdo it. You don't even need to really uh, tighten these incredibly hulkingly tight and that you give the appropriate time for the thread lock to seat and lock everything in. And now what we need to do guys, we need to pretty much screw it all the way down but not too hard. We actually want to go down towards finger tight. That's what I like to do and I like to back it off a little bit so we can still adjust the backlash. Same thing with the other side. Now, as you guys can see, the whole car is actually propped up on a couple tires. You want to be sure that your car is meshed properly with all the wheels off the ground. So you could make sure that the mesh is true and legit. Uh, now, what I like to do, I like to go all the way into where it can't go in anymore. And I like to wobble only the spur gear. I will not wobble this because obviously it's loaded with the magnets inside. Um, so I actually like to hold the motor and I'll only use my finger or one finger to uh, just move the spur or spool gear. And then what I'll do, I'll just back it off a little bit at a time. Now, another thing that I like to do, when you hear that, that is good. Um, one thing you need to do to confirm that good, you need to actually do one, well, what I like to do, I like to make sure that nothing is bent or nothing is crooked in the whole drive line transmission, whatever. So if you could hear this all around as you're spinning the, the motor and it sounds the same all around, that means you're really good. No matter how you put the car down, it will always be good. Now, when you hear that, what I like to do is just snug them up a little bit more and then snug the other side, but with a little bit more grunt. And you're good on that, and you're also good on that. Last but not least, what you should definitely do, no matter how you do it, make sure you always go over your work. So what I'm doing, basically, is just nut and bolting everything that I just went over. Just like that. You're not doing it any tighter, you're just being sure that all the screws are actually good. Additionally, what you should be doing whenever you run this car is do everything the night before. You also wanna be sure that you calibrate your ESC to the motor, do your endpoints, make sure your servo is straight, do your alignment, do whatever you need so that it's just ready to run the next day. So you're not out at the spot when you run and oh, I gotta do that, da, 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 da. Because running these cars is really, really, not time, but mind consuming. You really gotta concentrate when you run these things at extremely high speed. And the last thing on your mind should be, huh, did I tighten that bolt on the pinion gear? And if you guys know what that means, well, I've been there, a lot of us has been there where you're at speed, like 100 whatever miles an hour, and you have no throttle or brakes. If that situation scares you straight, this is pretty much what I did to compensate that mindset. And uh, I've been running a lot better ever since. And at the end of the day, guys, this is only a tenth of what I really do to this car. Obviously, there's a lot more subjects to talk about. So there's gonna be a lot more videos regarding just small topics like this. So over time, when I make more of these videos, I'm gonna add them all to a playlist that can help you guys out. Um, so it's really just gonna categorize them to where it's only gonna benefit you. If you guys found this video informational, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. So as always, be sure to stay safe and have a good one.